is finally time. It's finally time. It's finally time. As soon as the first person click in, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and welcome to the new fight studio. It's about to go down with some beer and some boxing. Ginger beer, that is. So as we get ready to tune in to the world of boxing, I'm just going to basically host this thing. But before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself. For those of you who've never watched my channel, shame on you. My name is Eric A. Bradley, a.k.a. The Real Fight Doctor. And there is no other on this here level. Back to the topic at hand. Deontay Wilder. Luis Ortiz. They're going in for battle this weekend. But before I really get into the fight, I got to get into the essence of this match. And the essence of this match comes from maybe 60 years ago, 70 years ago. The essence of what we call guys like these guys that are on this wall over here to my left. You have Henry Armstrong, and then right beside him, the Manasseh Mauler. And if you know who the Manasseh Mauler is, you put his name down, and I'm going to make sure that you get blessed on the next post. And the guy next to him is called Joe Lewis. And if you on this wall, that says something about you. What that says about you is you a real one, and nobody can ever question you what you did inside of that ring. And why these guys are relevant in this conversation is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to speak to a couple of things that it takes for you guys to understand what it takes to strap them boots up and get inside of that ring, climb between that rope. The first thing that it's going to take as you go through life and even in your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day world, you are doing something to build up your reputation on this planet. And the reputation is what people know about you, right? It's the thing that you put front and center. It's your profile picture. It's your bank account. It's what you go do when you hit the malls and the shopping stores. It's the way you dress, the way you dress, because that has something to do with your brand, your reputation. And those are the things that are on the outer context of what we are really trying to portray. But what you do not see is what's on the inside of a man. And what's on the inside of the man, we call that character. And that is what you cannot pretend. You cannot buy it. And it has to be present when things get dark. And that's one of the reasons I'm segueing it into the conversation at hand. Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Deontay Wilder, we already know. He's the bronze bomber. Kryptonite in his hands. Every time he touches a foe, one of the things that you notice happens, they quit way before the fight's over. But the reason why I brought these guys up on this wall is because Luis Ortiz is a man that is not caught up in the moment with putting things all over him to smother himself with this facade of something that he is. Luis Ortiz could have survived in any era as a heavyweight fighter. And I'm going to break it down why he could have. The dexterity in his fortitude. His daughter has a disease, but I'm not going to get on that. The thing about Luis Ortiz is when you see a guy like Luis Ortiz, many, many, many decades ago, there was a fight between the great George Foreman and the late, great Muhammad Ali. He's right here on this mural, all right? 
I got to keep it real. and Y'all got to stay with me. And if you got a moment, I want you to really understand that you guys are about to take you. I'm about to take you through a whirlwind of the science and the history of boxing before I bring it back to the current day. Muhammad Ali was the guy with the brash conversation, the way that you guys know uh, the Floyd Mayweather's, the, the, the Tyson Furies. Let me just say this because Tyson, Tyson Fury is more swift of tongue than Floyd Mayweather was. Floyd talked good jump, but Tyson Fury and, and Conor McGregor, those boys are born with a different gift, a different level of it. And, um, elevated IQs as well, and, and Floyd also has that. But what I'm going to explain to you guys is when George Foreman got into that ring, he was the bear. He was Deontay Wilder. He was Mike Tyson. He was all of the things, the Sonny Listens, the Manasseh Mauler, Jack Dempsey. He was those guys. So he didn't have a, a game plan B. In here, he didn't. In his corner, he did. Because in the corner, who he had was Archie Moore. Right? Hear what I'm saying? You're talking about the man who's the encyclopedia of boxing. He had that man. Y'all talking about Custy Amato. Custy Amato was a scientist behind the scenes. When they're talking to having somebody creative in your camp and then has an elevated IQ, yes, he was a boxing savant. Inside of your corner, at the same time, you can't replace that. That's not replaceable. You have a professor in your corner, George Foreman, had, and he's admitted to this, he was on a show the other day. Let me take a, my throat's getting dry. He was on the show the other day saying that, in respect to the Foreman family, he was told by his corner, the boxing savant, Archie Moore was in his corner. He was told by his corner to when he got knocked down, to stay down, wait for them to tell him when to get up. Let me explain something to you. One thing that you cannot control is the character in a man. That's why when Kostya Zhu fought Zab Judah, Zab Judah ended up getting stopped because he got right up without getting his balance first and he wobbled all over. And that's where we came with the term in boxing, stanky leg. Zab Judah created it. Pull it up. Zuda versus Kasia Zu. All right? Zu starts with a T S Z. All right? Just so you know, just start typing that in and it'll pop up. Zab Judah does a stanky leg. For George Foreman, one of the people that I respect in the sport of boxing for taking it from the streets and making it to the Olympics and taking it from the Olympics to world championship status and then make it heavyweight championship, loses it. 20 years later, regains it again in the same damn trunks. Let me tell you something. I have much respect. But when a man knock you down, the last thing your focus is is what your corner is saying when you are really wet, ready to get up. The thing about it is you didn't have a game plan B in here. You had it in your corner. But your game plan B wasn't right here because you came to destroy Muhammad Ali, the greatest mind trickster of all times inside of the ring. Today you know this term as he didn't want no smoke. And that's why he didn't get up. But to say that he did not get up because Archie Moore did not signal him to get up is bananas. So I had to get that off because that is where we are today. Luis 
Luis Ortiz, I was in that arena when he fought Deontay Wilder the first time. We met his sister. We met his team in the elevator, in the hotel, the even. That's a sound bite for you guys over at the even. Absolutely amazing hotel. Let me explain something. Everybody pulls up in something really fat. But when you saw Luis Ortiz and he took that pedestal, the way in, walked to the ring. When he got in there and fought, let me explain something to you. He got knocked, uh, knocked down once, not twice, three times. One of the knockdowns, they didn't count. But I was in the arena. He hit him with the same punch, Muhammad Ali. He got hit with the same punch in the second round that Muhammad Ali got hit with, I mean, hit Sonny Liston with. You know why I know this is because when he got up, he drooled. You don't drool when you slip. They didn't call it a knockdown, but it was a clipping shot. Called him. He didn't see it. But Deontay Wilder got dynamite in his fist. It doesn't take a lot when you have that already inside. That man got up. Not only did he get up then and fought, the bell rang, got up, fifth round, bam, again. And when he went down that time, remember, I'm not someone who was watching it on Showtime. I was in the arena. I had some good seats. Luis Ortiz came with a game plan. He rallied in the seventh round. And not only did he rally, he almost did the unthinkable to most of the people in the American public who are true advocates for supporting their fighters. We're not talking about people who are abroad and they get behind their kind of fair weather fans. We're talking about real cats. And when you saw Deontay Wilder hurt, I knew he had survival tactics. You know why? Because Deontay Wilder came from nothing. And guess what else he has? He has game plan B. He's fighting for something much bigger than just that night. So remember the phrase that I spoke of at the beginning. It's reputation versus character. And when he rose to the occasion after being wobbled and rocked, and it doesn't matter if somebody got seconds, the referee gave him seconds. Luis Ortiz had punched himself out. It's only so many punches you can throw, effective punches. And when a guy's flailing and, and rolling with him, Deontay Wilder may not have been groomed as an amateur fighter, but one of the things he do have is the instinct and the capability and the culpability to roll with punches when they coming. So even when he was getting hit, he said it wasn't about him hitting me hard. He was just throwing good combinations. So what we call that is you're caught up in his science. So he was caught up in Luis Ortiz's science. He was buzzed, but he knew he was conscious, but irrelevant. We've seen another guy in Anthony Joshua Get buzzed, get dropped, go down, get up, go down, stay down. Okay? This wasn't there the, the third time. And I'm not going to get into a back and forth about that because I'm going to, I want to ask those who are Anthony Joshua fans and followers to uh, make yourself known on the timeline because I'm going to go down and I'm going to comment and I'm going to go back and forth with you guys because it's time to tie some things up. All right, back to the topic. Deontay Wilder survives the seventh round. They go on and on. I know because I do this for a living. I don't just watch boxing. I am boxing. So when I seen him surviving, I knew what was happening. Luis Ortiz had tapped out. He, he, he threw it all. He pushed all his chips to the table, but he was going to fight. And when he got caught with that 10th round and, and those haymakers, it's hard to defend them. You never see me do a video on how you catch a haymaker. 
<laughs> the first thing you do to get, get out of the way of egg maker is bend your knees and get down to their level. So that shot goes over your head. Bob, get down tough. But when they come in left, nah, boom, boom, in the 10th round, it's a little bit different. Then you have to deal with exhaustion that you're already dealing with. And the fact that this man's throwing a lot of them over and then under after he drops them the first time. I realize this. This man is not quitting. He did not come tonight to get a check. When he got up off the canvas, he got up with his daughter in mind. Because he himself is fighting for something much more. Because when you're such a gorilla inside of that ring, you don't have a long list of people ready to get in there and get that smoke. And that's one of the things that Luis Ortiz is having to deal with. He doesn't have a power for team like Floyd Mayweather. He doesn't have the, we'll call it the criteria because he's not a flashy, flamboyant guy. So he's not drawing the kind of people around him that, that kind of push for those type fights that you would like to see. Would you like to see Anthony Joshua in the ring with Ortiz? Maybe even Tyson Fury? I like to see him get that smoke. Thing is, is once he went down in that 10th round, he had to knock him out because he wasn't going anywhere. It's because the moral of this first post, the first chapter of what I'm going to go through with you guys tonight, is all about not reputation that some of these guys slide through the cracks and get up here to the top. And then you find out what they really made of Anthony Durrell. Um, not Anthony, Andre Durrell. I'm going to speak to that for a brief second in a moment. When you have the opportunity, you have the boxing cachet, you have the pedigree, all of these things. And then when the moment of truth comes, you find your way out. And that's what this kid was not trying to do. It was the moment of truth, and he was proving to his daughter, when you down, you get back up. He had to be totally knocked out, which he was. Because when he hit him, you could feel the buzz in the arena. That is character. Von Durrell. And the only man that's in a frame that sits on my desk, Archie Moore. Tell you something. The old mongoose was nothing but character, the definition of creator. He is the encyclopedia of boxing. All of the styles that we are today glamorizing and some of you guys are out there you're on that tip i love the philly shell i love the peekaboo i love all this well you're talking about a man who chased the title for 15 years because he was so good at it he created all of that stem from what he created all of that stem from that so if you want to know about boxing you need to study the greatest. I'm done with that chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed the first round of beer and boxing. Next round, we want to get into the Anthony Joshua. Now, I wanted to make sure that everybody out here... Hold up. Let me back this up. If anybody has any rebuttals to drop down, let me know where you're from. I need to know where you're from because I'm going to explain to you just by knowing where you're from, if the area you live in will be kryptonite if you're trying to be a fighter or if you're coaching fighters in that area. Because when it comes down to building a fighter, an athlete, to get to the point that one day you're on my wall and there's nothing but world championship blood on this wall. You got to have a certain 
swagger when you walk. You got to have a certain swagger when you talk to make it to this wall. And if you're trying to get there, wherever you're from is going to determine if you make it to that pinnacle or not. So drop down where you're from. Let me know where you're at and I can tell you what's popping. Now we're getting to Anthony Joshua. State of mind. I want to think about one thing about Anthony Joshua when it comes to what he has to overcome to go into this fight that he's having to get into. First and foremost, the first thing you do not do is get right back into the ring when you haven't figured anything out. That's the last thing you do not do. You ask Sugar Shane Mosley. He wanted to get that smoke with Vernon Forrest again. He got it again. He wanted to get that smoke with Winky Wright. He got it and he got it again. The only thing you're going to get the next time is what you got faster when you get knocked out. Because you cannot pretend. There is no exercise program that's going to overcome what you got to deal with mentally. I don't care how big your muscles is. I, I was so big one time I couldn't even touch my back. Today, I would crush that guy. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all about being able to get to the spot in boxing. You know, you don't need all of that, man. Boxing is about instinct, intuition, reflexes, rebounds, reaction, motor skills. So, you know. You don't know what you got hit with half the time because that boy was letting his hands go. When you let your hands go, those are called combinations, which none of the fighters that you see fighting truly understand how to do it because they skip line. And when I say skip line, I mean they want to get to the cool, flashy stuff so fast that they don't understand how a combination comes about. A combination is happening from a certain algorithm in which you fight from. But when you get emotional, you start arm punching, there's no way that can happen without gassing out. So that's exactly why you don't see great combination punching. So when a guy's hitting you with combination punches and you're being struck from the head to the body, they're fast, and they're hard. You cannot figure that out. Let me explain why. One, because you don't have any darn sparring partners that's going to bring that smoke like that. So you can't get the rhythm. You can't get the timing. You cannot get the reps that it's going to take. So, let me see. All right. I got a question that I need to answer, and I think it was a good one, so I'm going to jump into it. Um, Carice. Carice asked, shouts out to you, brother. Um, how do you feel about the lack of head movement from the, the heavyweights today? Um, you're not overreacting. What I'm speaking of with Anthony Joshua kind of is going to segue to that anyway. So perfect timing for your question. What you're going to acknowledge if a guy doesn't know how to let his hands go through in combination, shouts out to Andy Ruiz, reached out to me four years ago to help him with his nutrition plan and his exercise. <laughs> Look at him now. Now, what you got to see and what you got to really take into consideration is this <laughs> when you tell a guy who want to hit like this to throw him like this and use the body mechanics and what we call this language, the language in which you flow with, it also sets you up for defense. So if a guy can throw his punches properly, then he will have natural head movement because it takes muscle memory, not memory, muscle memory, like what happens when the door shuts fast or someone does like that to your eyes, eyes blink. 
you get knocked out unconscious, your respiratory system takes over. If you get punched and you drop, you kick your legs. Those are muscle reactions, okay? So what you got to understand is that has to be groomed and built. We were, it's obvious that we teach because I got 100,000 people on this page, so you know that we teach boxing. But I'm always trying to drive a point every day, and it's a little bit frustrating when I see cats like you trying to jump line, trying to jump up here with the guys who are actually in the ring, throwing punches, catching punches, block, bobbing and weaving, pivoting, and bop, 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 you just coming into the gym probably ain't been boxing a year. And you want to get in there and you want to look like them. You want to do what they're doing. So you're going to take a couple of video clips that I put out there for you guys. And then you think you're going to jump line. If it was that easy, why would I even have to go to the gym and stay in there three or four hours? Man, muscle memory is a real thing. If you teach your fighters how to throw punches the right way, they're going to know how to move their head because the body works on an axle. That's what boxing is. It takes so long to make people realize that boxing is not these. Boxing is these. All right? You don't box with your hands. You box with your feet. Thank you. It starts down there. That's your foundation. I get very frustrated, but I'm very calm and patient because I've been doing this 30 years. And in the other 20, I was studying. All right? Key is don't let one thing get away from you because it's going to impact the other thing. And that's what's going to cause you to never be Archie Moore, the old mongoose. Let me explain. Hands, offense and defense and footwork is one. If you seeing the guy, he can't, ain't moving his head, that means he ain't letting his hands go either. So let's just say for his boxing, his grade's an F. Because if you can't do it from the beginning, if you can't, how can you count to 10 if you don't know the first four numbers? My point exactly. So fighting is 10 times tougher than that, but it's delivered in the same process. And that's one of the reasons I speak to you guys. I get a little, I want to be able to make it make it clear to you. They say the first person to have to explain it to the world is going to have the hardest job. But I'm, I multiply myself into 10 people. So hopefully by the third person that I divide myself into, I'm getting the point across. First there's Fight Doctor. Then there's Coach Bradley. Then there's me. Okay? All of these people come together as one to push it out there and make sure you understand that if you gonna learn how to box, you gotta learn it from the ground because when you get hit, your defense got to be intact and you gotta be able to be constant. If you watch those footwork training drills, I make you do things that you're not expecting to do. That's why in our school of boxing, you're gonna have nothing but muscle memory going on for the first four to six weeks, your foundation. So, man, I don't want to hear anybody inboxing me, inboxing, direct messaging, up on WhatsApp, none of that, talking about sending me videos about your Philly shell and you doing the Philly shell and it, you getting hit sometimes. When you ain't never fought nobody like me, you ain't been tested, 
and you ain't been admitted to class yet. So why are you even using the Philly shell? You don't even know how to keep your hands up. How you going to try to fight with one hand up? Look, what you think you can do, I promise you, you can't do. Because if you think you can do it, all you got to do is give me your number, shoot it to the DM, connect with me, and I'll put you to the test. If you got a fighter that you think got it down, just sign them up. We'll bring them in and we'll test it. He'll get a grade after it was finished. And I'll let you know if you need to go back to school or if you need to sign up online with us. Because I'm going to tell you something. You think you got it. You don't got it. Because if you had it, it wouldn't take the guys that's under my tutelage a minimal of two years to get all of those postures familiar with them. Three minute video, maybe a one minute video. You can't even begin to get familiar with what you got to do. You're crazy if you think you can do it. You're telling me that you're better than these guys? I never curse on this page. I've probably cursed four times in 10 years. This I've been on this page for five years, just on Facebook, six years almost. I ain't cursed for like four times. You can kiss my ass <laughs> if you think you're better than these guys. That's Henry Armstrong right there, boy. That's Henry Armstrong. Three, three, three weight classes. You know the difference between the guys that do it now and Henry Armstrong? You know the difference between you? Look, cat, you don't even run every day. You be faking like you're running. You don't even wake up shadow boxing. You ain't shadow boxing when you brushing your teeth. You ain't shadow boxing when you at the dinner table. You was not running six or seven miles on a day you weren't supposed to run. You probably still don't even swim. You trying to tell me you better than him? Because that boy went three weight classes and didn't gain a pound. He stayed his weight. I paused for a second because I was giving you time to get that last statement straight. Three weight classes. Don't come to me talking about no Philly shell. Don't come to me talking about some peekaboo. If you ain't got the course, because you don't understand how much of a savage package it is. But you got an invitation. I don't care if you coaches. I don't care if you fighters. You got the invitation to come test your medal. Trust me. And we going to grade it. And I'll put the highlights out there on you. If you think you can fight, because a lot of you think you already there. I already think you better than Ezra Charles. <laughs> you think you better than Ezra Charles. He'll cut your whole jaw off. You ain't got the dexterity, boy. Them boys used to drink ox blood. Rub meat grind on their face. The Manasseh Mala Jack Dempsey. So he wouldn't cut because he was coming. He was going to take one to give it, and then he was going to get you caught up in that Dempsey Road prequel to the Peekaboo. You ain't going to know nothing about getting that smoke. So, I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, you better do it right. Boxing in school, in class, it's in session. It's on to the next chapter, people, because we got a couple of things to cover, and I want to make sure that I get any other questions that are really good and that really need to permeate on the screen before we move to the next topic. Uh, because I do want you to understand you got to be careful with this boxing. Several fighters have died just this year, and those guys were trained. Any mistakes you make, man, and I'm going to get into that conditioning. Some of the things that people like Anthony Joshua was doing wrong. I said it from the beginning. Just because he was winning does not mean he wasn't doing something that was detrimental to his future health. Because one of the things that's in boxing is that shit is in levels. Excuse my French. I'm half French. I'm going to make sure you understand that whenever you are under the influence of training, one of the things that's going to happen is eventually 
Sugar Ray Robinson gonna meet Jake LaMotta. Jake LaMotta. See right there? That Jake LaMotta with the curly wavy hair like that, son. Jake LaMotta coming at you like the Raging Bull. So good they had to make a movie on him. So good he had to make a movie. I mean, tell me how good you are at something you do that they gonna make a movie about it. And the movie was in black and white. I'm gonna tell you something, man. When you fighting somebody like Jake LaMotta, Sugar Ray Robinson learned real quick. It's levels. I'm beating everybody to death. Not just beating them, but I'm knocking cats out. 109 to be exact. But when I got in there, that boy brought that smoke. He proved to me that there were levels to this game. And he had to find out which level are you. And he was bringing that smoke nonstop. Three minutes, 15 of them things. He come and he fought him again three weeks later. Hey, man. I'm just trying to tell you. You got to know how to condition yourself. I call these. Nah, 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 nah. Jake Lamadas. Cause when you go into that gym, that trunk got to be tight. Because you're going to get right here. And it's not going to take away the hurt, stupid. <laughs> the only thing it's going to help is make sure that your body don't fold over. Because it's going to puncture your lung either way. It don't matter how many sit-ups you do. You can take them medicine balls. And what that medicine ball do, that leather one, what it does is help create the, the, the calcification in the bones. And then it helps build on that fascia. You mix that stuff like calluses. And then what's happening is all of that stuff is compressing. And it's becoming very dense in the dexterity of your body. <clears throat> that don't mean it ain't going to hurt when Jake come at that. Bam! And shoot that thing through that liver. Boom! And break you in, son. So, you know. All I know, 100% of my whole fiber is fighting. That's all I know when it comes down to it. So I want y'all to be careful about going out there the wrong way. No, you can't learn it on the fly. And this, you definitely can't learn it on YouTube. So Anthony Joshua need rebound muscle that you don't get by doing war rope and medicine ball tosses and bicep curls and shoulder presses and building up the legs. You can't get it. They have to be affluent because they have to, uh, uh, and you, uh, uh, now you see that language, man. Uh, uh, the best offensive fighter, balance wise, was Joe Lewis Farrell. Shouts out to Joe Lewis family. Gloria, how you doing? I'm gonna tell you, that guy, he would Jimmy, come with the feet. Uh, he walked with that thing. Uh, uh, and one of the things that I noticed about him, opposed to all other fighters, is that he never lost balance. And you know why? Because his foundation. And you know how hard it is to not be impulsive when you start getting into a war and just start losing your controls and your composure? Man, that's nearly impossible to do. He could just, yeah. he was 63 and three. You know, two of them was when he was old. One, when he realized their levels, Jack Dempsey. I mean, Max Schmeling. Caught him out there on Queer Street, dropping that left after he threw the jab. He threw the jab, and the boy caught him over the top. Bam! Introduced him to the counter right hand. Same thing Gene Tunney did to Jack Dempsey. Jack Dempsey had never been countered before over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because it took that many to get him out of there. Same thing with Joe Lewis. He took about 400 right hands and Max and um, uh, Schmelin could punch. <coughs> he was knocking cats out. So you can imagine how many, how sore his jaw was. But in the rematch, the whole world was watching. You know, it was like Floyd and Pacquiao. Um, Joe Lewis came back, redeemed himself, and redeemed the country. Shouts out to Joe Lewis again. He knocked him out in one round. All he had to do was be introduced to this levels to this game, man. And this levels. 
But I will be doing some things um, because you guys are fans. I will be accepting those um, individuals who are putting together a very, very solid training uh, one to two minutes, no more than two minutes of footage and making sure that you connect with us on a WhatsApp or inside of the academy only because I want to do a video like I did last week where I really went over some of the guys who actually, if you are a customer, you're going to get your footage looked at. You can believe that. Yeah, when I got the peekaboo bundle, wanted to show us some stuff, I put him in the academy. I wanted him to be able to learn and, and understand what it truly takes to do it. I'm never going to keep saying, yeah, you're doing it right. Because guess what? I ain't your mama. I'm going to tell you the truth. And uh, I'm going to make sure that you're doing what you need to be doing right and you're not rushing. This thing take a long time. It take a long time. Yeah, it take way longer than you want to. But the end result... end up on that wall conditioning is important conditioning is important understand how to do it and if you don't reach out to someone who does know because if you get in there and you condition wrong you're gonna look like Anthony Josh and now you're trying to lose all that weight so you can man you can't lose that weight in no three months four months I was lifting weights when I was lifting weights I'm trying to cut that weight off. It took seven years, for real. The muscle that you build, it ain't going nowhere. So you're thinking every week you got to keep it, keep it. No, that stuff ain't going nowhere, for real. For my arms and body to get back down to its natural, flaccid texture, man, it took completely seven years. And I'm a, and I'm a aficionado when it comes down to the human body. So what you think? <laughs> I mean, that was, that was just truly 100% a reality check. And I ain't never been no out of shape dude that I am now. Make sure you tag somebody, tell a friend that we getting it in. Next week, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to have one, one of these shows right before the fight, right before the fight. I think we're going to do it on Friday night. We might do it on Saturday night. And whatever it is, that's what it's going to be continuously because I want to chop it up and let me see. I had one major thing that I wanted to do is I want to get a prediction on this weekend's fight. Um, drop down in the comment box who you think went in this fight this weekend. And the reason why is because everybody that does and emails us, the email will be down in the comment box. Um, we're going to set you off on Black Friday. Make sure you got some amazing tools. And if you get it right and you call the round, you'll get free admittance and accepted into the online school of boxing totally for the entire year. So let's see what you got. Let's check your boxing cachet. All of you talking that boxing, chatting on the line. If you ever curse on my feed, you block. I don't even send you no message. If you ever say stupid stuff, you're blocked. I don't have time for it. And I've done my admins and the people. I'm not. This is a channel and a page that the federations, the boxing federations are on. Presidents and people who are network owners that run networks are watching. Everything that's on this feed is professionally watched around the globe. If we got over 2 million people watching this thing fluently, consistently, constantly, you know it's people of influence. So don't be stupid on my feed, all right? You go to the groups and do that crazy stuff or start a group, but be professional because um, if you disrespecting the sport of boxing, you disrespecting these guys and you disrespecting this man, and I got a problem with that. So what I tell you to do is drop your prediction down. Tell me in detail what you think is going to happen. Will character outweigh power? Uh, boxing and beer is going down. Now we go to the Twitter jabs. Twitter 
jabs is basically what the fighters are saying on Twitter, and I wanted to add that to the to the um, content tonight because it's a it's relevant to what Ortiz said. I'm gonna discuss boxing years with you guys. Boxing years, he says, age is just a number, and you know what? In some cases, there are. With Bernard Hopkins, age was just a number because he just was preserved well, but he didn't have bad habits, neither did Floyd. Um, Luis Ortiz appeared to be a pretty stand-up guy. Um, I know he got into a point where he gotten overweight. He has a strength and conditioning coach, which absolutely means nothing. I just wanted to make make it clear to you. I'm a, I'm a strength and conditioning guy. I mean... Boxing first, that other stuff second, but yeah, unless you understand what you're doing and trying to do, like if your if your strength and conditioning coach really ain't a fighter, he, he don't really know what he need. He, for him, it's all perception. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it means nothing. It just means you're gonna be really, really your heart's gonna be working really good, and you're gonna have very low cholesterol on fight night. That's what it means. I'm just saying. I'm sorry. You, that bursts your bubble. It carries about as much weight as um, an ant. It's necessary, but there's a different kind of focus when you're prepping for um, a fight. <laughs> like James Tony said, the only thing I do is spar. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle memory. Hey, kind of keep it simple, but you got to do things that's necessary to make sure that you have that your heart is pumping when someone puts you to another. Ah, he, you got four valves, you might need five one night. So certain things that you got to do and you have to do it a particular way. We have a muscle optimization program. I mean, it just makes the muscle operate at an optimal level. It, you're not muscle dependent. You don't need no barbell and you know, you're doing all this stuff. Be careful, man. It's fun to do it because you, it makes you look better carries no weight and I'm a conditioning coach <laughs> so I'm just saying it's a lot of things you can do if you understand a fighter if you know what a fighter might need rebounds you might build them in certain areas but you got to know what you're doing you can't train him like you train a football player you can't even train him I mean most of the times people Michael Jackson was training with Arnold was it Arnold Schwarzenegger or um it was Arnold Schwarzenegger or Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno. Michael Jackson. And Lou Ferrigno, so I gave him five pounds. He was like, this is too heavy. Like, <laughs> he's a dancer. Dancers don't train like like uh, football players. And Arn, um, Lou Ferrigno, you're going to be who your trainer is. So if your trainer is 300 pounds telling you to do something, you know, you're in trouble. Just saying. But... Just keep that in mind when you're dropping your predictions that Luis Ortiz, doesn't matter, he's doing all that stuff. He will be ready to fight. That is coming from inside. You ain't got to worry about that. He going to be there in there. He coming with the thump. Um, Deontay Wilder got to knock him out, and um, hopefully um, the check will be the same either way. There's no pay for overtime. So with that being said, I want to make sure that I got out the Twitter blast. And um, we got a lot of good fights coming up. I'm looking forward to this year coming up. And uh, I'm glad that you guys took the time to hang out with us. Remember, leave your comment down. I want to see your predictions. I like to read a little something. So when I do have a moment, um, I like to hear the intelligent people. And if you're not intelligent, just send a shout out to somebody. Tag your buddy that might appreciate a post that gives them some real insight and this is not blowing smoke up there. But all my people out there, um, Jay Marie, all of the cats out there that's really, really about that boxing life, even if you're a diehard fan, respect the game and respect the ghosts of the game, the guys who laid down a whole lot of sweat, blood and tears. For those of you who want to get get your programming together, make sure you connect with us online. We have Black Friday coming up. And if you really need to take and really construct your training camp coaches and trainers, you got to make sure you get that Champions Bundle. Gives you 
all of the quality content and it's laid out in the course. That's the only way you'll get it the right way. And then you can create a product when it comes down to your athletes. I'm gonna make it clear to you, Cass. There are only so many belts. Everybody's not gonna be a champion. But with boxing, it opens so many doors. It shines the light on you. So whatever you do want, it can open those doors for you. It can open up so many doors in your life and change the direction of your life, your children's life, and your children's children's life. Just remember that. You don't have to be the world champion. That's not everybody's DNA. You may be destined to be great in something else. Boxing just opens the door. We're here to help you to get there. Until next time, Fight Doctor signing out. Be blessed at God's speed. This is the School of Boxing. Class is in session. Peace. Boom!